So let me tell you a story and then you will do the math. <laughs> so, when I was eight years old, we moved from Poland to Germany. I remember one event very clearly. I was sitting in my classroom in the second grade, and everywhere those kids laughing, talking in a language I didn't understand. And just two days before, I was standing up when the teacher came in in my blue polyester uniform. So then suddenly the teacher writes something on the left. 13 plus 20. And I'm waking up from my dream, from my bubble, saying, ah, but I understand that. I know what it is, and I can solve it. So this was one of the first moments when I realized, wow, mathematics is universal. And without even understanding one word of German, I understand, I can solve it. So growing up, I continued to be fascinated by this universality and beauty which seemed to be appearing everywhere. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> Galileo Galilei once said something like, the book of nature is written in the language of mathematics, and its characters are circles, triangles, and other geometrical figures. Without it, we are walking like through a vein. So what do mathematicians refer to as beautiful? They always talk about this beauty. Like a formula which captures a lot of phenomena. Or uh, the two theories combined to theories which was not there before. Or a deep, pro uh, a deep statement proven by a very short and essential proof. And we are not just crazy people. We really perceive it as beautiful. There were some measurements last year which showed when, so they showed some uh, equations to mathematicians, beautiful equations, and the same areas in the brain popped up, lighten up, as when you see beautiful painting, or you hear beautiful music. So let me give you an example. When uh, I started university, I first went to study electrical engineering. So my father was like the Polish MacGyver, and I wanted to understand how electrical things work. So I came across Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's equations, what is that? This is a basis of, so this is, a re, uh, first of all, this shows a relation between elect, um, magnetism and, and like electric and magnetic forces. So the electricity you're using every day is made by generators who work according to these equations. You like that smartphone? This is where it works. <laughs> So without this discovery, there would be no lights, no cameras, no smartphones, no internet. For so some people, some parents would say, yay. <laughs> <laughs> it would be no, we would go nowhere. So then I discovered that I was more fascinated by the formulas and formalism describing the phenomena than the phenomena itself. So I went to study mathematics and psychology. I wanted to study the foundation of uh, nature, which I saw in the study of mathematics. and the foundation of human um, kind, the human mind. Like from an evolutionary point of view, the brain is operating uh, biological tools, because otherwise we would not be able to survive. If the Neanderthal man saw a tiger eating his friend, he would stay away from tigers in order to survive. And take grammar, for example. Grammar is a set of structural rules governing the composition of phrases and words. Without the logical machine in our brain, we would not be able to learn a language. Let me tell you about an um, ongoing conversation I have with my daughter. So she's five years old, and she loves to draw everything. And uh, she comes to me one day and says, yeah, mom, I know you're a mathematician, and you're inventing new numbers every day, but I really cannot do it. And I don't understand it, and I don't know what it's used for, useful for. So how many of you have the same? <laughs> thank you, thank you. So also your heart is bleeding. That's why, why, why? And I tried to convince her, like I'm trying to convince you today, that look, it's beautiful, it's everywhere. You can do and understand a lot of things if you have some basis and, and you give it a chance. And she looks skeptical and says, yeah, but can you make this table? Can you build a table? And I say, yeah, well, I didn't try it before, but I can calculate the shape, I can calculate where I have to put the legs, how long they have to be. Like, ah, okay. Mm -hmm. But I like to draw, and I don't need mathematics for that. I see, well, now you're drawing your, your nice uh, figures and flowers and so on, but if you want to give the creation, the illusion of depth, you want to draw in perspective. 
example, this picture shows. So Giotto, in around 1200, was one of, one, one of the early ones who uh, used an algebraic method to determine the placement of different, uh, different lines in perspective um, drawings. And she continues, yeah, hmm, still not convinced. Yeah, but uh, what about music? So we heard beautiful uh, music pieces also today. And I said, I tell her, look, reading music, it's like cutting cakes. Said, huh? Yeah, you take a beat, this is one cake, and then you cut it in different pieces with different lengths. This is the same as you, this is the same when you take a beat, you subdivide it into quarters, halves, and so on. Said, ah. And for example, when you have when you have a guitar, what um, so how can you how can, could Oisin reproduce this a bit higher pitched sound of her guitar? She put a capo uh, on the uh, fret, so the length of the string was shortened and the vibration was in a, was um, going on in a higher frequency. So this is producing a high pitched noise. Then I said, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So when still not completely convinced, but. What they're trying to tell you, mathematics is everywhere. You cannot escape it. Like every time you decide how, how much gas to put in your gas tank, you're solving a linear equation. Every time you're trying to adjust measure, uh, uh, measurements for recipe, you're doing cross multiplication. Every time you're, you're deciding uh, what is the shortest path to, to the shop, you, you're solving an optimization problem. So you're dealing with mathematics with more mathematics every day that you are aware of. And even chips. <laughs> <laughs> so chip designers, engineers run supercomputers to determine the perfect shape of a chip <laughs> in order to make it safe to your home. So this is the equation describing this shape. It's called hyperbolic paraboloid. Beautiful. <laughs> I mean that one. <laughs> so, I hope I could convince you a bit that mathematics is universal, everywhere, beautiful, and objective. So if you think those are the same attributes, you would give to truth. So take the statements, you are sitting here today, I have two arms, you would agree with me that those statements are universal, and have no ambiguities and are still hold 100 years from now. So <coughs> mathematics gives you the path to this search and no discipline is so many sided and has influences and is influencing so many other things. So take, for example, the school of Athens where young students were taught about philosophy and nature based heavily on mathematics, based on fundamental logic. Let me tell you another story. I was once, uh, when I was a student, I was uh, caught taking a bus uh, without a valid bus ticket. So I had a seven day ticket and it was already day eight. And uh, yeah, I was a student, I didn't have much money, so I tried to get out of the situation. And I convinced the inspector that I was so bad in mathematics and I just missed this seven day validity. And <laughs> I'm still ashamed and please don't repeat it at home, but he sympathized with me. He said, yeah, we, I can understand you. And I got away with it. I got away with it. Another story. So when I go sometimes to parties or meet other people, talk to other people, and they ask you, what are, what are you doing? Then I get very often the response, also two days ago, again, oh, I was never good in mathematics. So how many of you thought the same? <laughs> So my friend, he's a writer, he doesn't get that. He doesn't get, I, can write, I cannot write my name. He doesn't get that. So I get that. And that this made me think, and I realized, well, this, this and other two, uh, this two examples and other examples showed me that it is somehow socially accepted to say that one is bad in mathematics, and worse, that you think you can decide for not making it part of your life. But that, and, and by accepting this fact, you're conditioning also others, you're conditioning our children, your role models in, uh, for, for people, for children, for everybody, you're conditioning them to do the same. So let me repeat, there is no escape. <laughs> Forget it. There is a, you can do it. Everybody can do it if you just set the right frequency and you're doing it already, face it. You're doing it every day. 
So doing mathematics is not only about solving millennium problems. Those are problems proposed by the Clay Institute of Mathematics, um, very hard problems for which you can get $1 million if you solve them. So don't leave. <laughs> um, but about taking a complex problem and analyzing it, subdividing it into smaller subproblems, which you can solve, and then put it back together. So this, and I believe that the training in mathematics can give you the ability for doing that. In the technological world where everything is changing fast, opinions are changing fast, you have new developments popping out every day, I think it is very essential to have this ability to, to be able to oversee that, see this complex problem, take out the objective and essential methods and analyze the, the situation. And a lot of things do not have to be black boxes like com uh, com computing uh, compound com interest rates. So that's, those are interest rates of interest rates. Or, for example, interpreting news in the right way in the media, which we are uh, around all the time. And there's it's all the time all kind of news and graphs and numbers, and you think just because there's a number, it should be true, but it's not. So let me give you my last example. This is a graph <laughs> showing the so it's, it's actual data. So you show you have here the number of pirates, <laughs> and the, uh, this is drawn against the global average temperature. So please don't call your bosses and quit your job to become a pirate <laughs> to save the world. No, don't do that. Um, so what does it, the graph show us? It shows us that there is a correlation between the number of pirates and the global average temperature. <laughs> But no causation. So correlation does not imply causation. So what does it mean? It means in time, the career choice of becoming a pirate, apart from Johnny Depp, is becoming less interesting. <laughs> and the global average temperature is increasing for other reasons. So the only thing they have in common is time. You see, but there is no causation. Well, maybe in this example, it is a fine example, it, it may be obvious to see, I hope, don't call your boss. <laughs> it is, it is uh, uh, in other examples, it may be not. Other examples which are presented to you every day. So, don't close the door to mathematics too early. You are missing something out. And if you let it open, you can understand and enjoy the beauty of nature, like Galileo said, and you will be prepared for the complex world. So, I send you out to the world and discover mathematics. Thank you very much.